Oh, we have gone live. <laughs> I did not know we have gone live. Okay. Oh, sorry, guys. <laughs> oh, let me start my room. Sorry about that. I did not realize that it had actually gone live. Congratulations. We've been live for about a minute. <laughs> Just a second. Dun, dun, dun. I apologize. Sometimes I'm multitasking too much. So I apologize for that. Just one second. We're going to talk about online arbitrage today. I just got to get a couple of All right, we are live on Clubhouse. We're also live in the e-commerce planning Facebook group. This is the daily e-com planning session. Today's topic is online arbitrage. My name is Nicole Whitlock, and my passion is helping people on their e-commerce journey, helping them to get organized, get focused, get consistent in their business. If that's you, you'll be given the opportunity to schedule a free 20-minute coaching session in a little bit. But first, let's get into our topic for today. So join us on Clubhouse if you haven't already done so. Uh, before we get into the topic, or after we go through the topic, we're going to actually uh, go through the daily econ planning checklist afterwards. So you can go over to the e-commerce planning Facebook group, uh, choose from the menu, choose the files section from the menu, and then you can download the daily, the weekly, and the monthly planning checklist so you can follow along after we go through online arbitrage. So go download the daily econ planning checklist so we are ready to go through uh, those daily planning activities. So with that, we're going to talk about online arbitrage today. Um, as I said, we're live on Clubhouse. We're also live in the e-commerce planning Facebook group. And the question of the day is, is online arbitrage right for you? So what is online arbitrage? It's the process of purchasing products for a lower price and then reselling those products online via a marketplace or a website uh, for a higher price for a profit. And most of the time, sellers will typically purchase those products at a discounted price so that they can maximize their profit. So uh, an example might be, you know, you may find a blanket and you find it on a website for a really low price and you sell it on another website for a higher price. A better example is we're going into some holidays here. So we've got, um, well, Valentine's Day is next week, too close, but we have some other holidays, St. Patty's Day, uh, Easter, Mother's Day, Father's Day, yeah. spring break, all of the like events and holidays that are coming up. And so with online arbitrage, you're typically going to find something that you know is going to be in the stream of purchasing, in the stream of money. People are going to be spending money anyway, so why not sell those products? So in most cases with online arbitrage, you're going to find products that are already going to be selling because... So with that example, you might find a Mother's Day item that maybe is popular. Maybe you've done a little bit of research in the past. And so that product is popular and you may find an online uh, purchase for it that you can use discount. There's all kinds of discount websites or you can find it for a lower price. Maybe it's on sale and then you purchase it and you relist it on another platform for a higher price. You got to get it if you're going to like ship it into a warehouse or whatever. But in essence, you acquire it for a lower price and then relist it for a higher price. So that might be an example of something that you may purchase um, as an online arbitrager. So what can you sell? You can pretty much sell almost anything. Some of your limitations are going to be based on the platform that you're going to be selling on. So, but you can pretty much sell almost anything doing online arbitrage, very similar to retail arbitrage. And which platforms can you sell those products on? Again, it's going to be based off of what platforms that you're, you know, you've already created accounts for and or you're approved to be able to sell certain products. Some platforms will have limitations or restrictions or requirements. So you need to be mindful of that as you're doing um, arbitrage. 
you may decide that you want to focus 100% on specific products. So for some people, they just focus on replenishables, things that people have to buy anyway, or consumables. Uh, there's going to be all kinds of amazing consumables for Easter and, um, you know, the candy and just a lot of stuff <laughs> people will be eating uh, for Easter. So those are easy. You can sell those in multi-packs. Um, how many hours do you have to spend doing online arbitrage? It really depends on you. You get to decide how many hours. Now, I would recommend highly that you create a consistent schedule if you want to have a consistent cash flow. So a consistent schedule is always going to matter. But it doesn't require... Um, it does require some time, but it doesn't require all your time. So if you want to do online arbitrage for five hours a week, you can do that. If you want to do it for 10 hours a week, you can do that or 20 or 30. It's your call based on your availability and your time. So you decide what your hours are going to be. But I would encourage you to be consistent about it so that you can make that money. Um, how much of an investment do you have to make in order to do online arbitrage? It doesn't require a huge upfront investment, much like retail arbitrage. You can find things, you know, you can um, decide that you're going to go after items that are low cost, that you're going to resell for a higher price. And so you can start off at $25 a week, $50 a week, $100 a week. Or you can get all the way up to two, three, or $4,000 a week. It just depends on your profit margins and what you're shooting for from an income standpoint. The great thing again about online arbitrage is you're typically selling things that people are going to potentially be buying anyway. So uh, you're not going to hold this, you know, the inventory that you acquire, you're not going to be holding it long, hopefully, uh, because you're selling things that you know you're going to be able to be fat, be able to flip fast. They're going to be fast flips, things that you can sell quickly. So, but you do have to have some level of cash investment. So you decide how much you want to invest. You can start as low as, like I said, $25, $50, dollars a week, and then you can uh, scale up from there. But you want to make sure that you have that upfront cash flow. And the one thing I would recommend if you're going to get started in online arbitrage is that for at least the first three, if not six months, if you're wanting to scale the business, that you reinvest 100% of your profits. I would recommend that. So um, at least, if not 100%, at least 80% of your profits so that that way you have an opportunity to build some cash flow into your business. Otherwise, you're going to have to get outside, potentially get outside uh, income sources to be able to sustain the momentum that you're building in your business. So if you can invest and not go crazy about investing <laughs> for the first three to six months. And what I mean by go crazy, some people don't like the fact that they buy something and then they don't immediately get the money back. Like, okay. So you have to be willing to understand that this is an investment in your business. So if you're investing $50 a week, that's $200 a month. And you're doing that for three months, that's $600 investment. Are you going to go nuts if you don't immediately have all, all 600 of your dollars back? So same thing with retail arbitrage. Like you have to be prepared mentally that you're going to make an investment for a period of time. You're going to eventually get that money back. And just like with retail arbitrage, I would encourage you to invest as much as possible up front so that you can build a cash flow into it and it gives you an opportunity to scale it over time. So um, how much can you make? Again, that depends on what your profit margins are that you're shooting for. So you, you know, I would encourage you because the different platforms are going to have, uh, you know, different selling fees or referral fees or whatever, depending on which platforms you decide you're going to sell on. So like Amazon is going to have higher fees. They do get a lot of traffic, but they're going to have higher fees that you have to contend with. So that's going to eat into your margin. So you need to be prepared for that. So you, you know, you could have, um, you can make, you know, $100 a month or you could make five or $10,000 a month. Depends on how much you're investing. So you need to know what your margins are, 30%, 40%, or you, you know, are your margins going to be super tight and they're going to be closer to 15 or 20%. If you're doing margins of 15 or 20%, then depending on the platforms that you're selling on, then your profit is really going to be low. So you're going to have to raise it a little bit to account for the platform fees. 
So you just need to be prepared for that. But you can make money. You really can. There are a lot of people that make a lot of money doing online arbitrage. They make a lot of money doing that. Um, but again, they're scaling their business and they've got a cash flow process in place. So what skills or knowledge are required to be able to do online arbitrage? Well, you got to get good at research. You do. Um, you have to get good at analyzing data and looking at your stats so you can actually become profitable. Um, it does require some level of patience, but a lot of the products, hopefully, that you're sourcing for online arbitrage are things that are going to be fast flips. If they're not fast flips, if you're going to do the buy and hold strategy, which is another one, the great thing about the buy and hold strategy is that you can sell products for a higher profit margin, much higher, but you have to be prepared to hold those for a period of time. So there's a couple of different ways in which you can do that. One, and you need to be able to, if you have to create listings, you need to be able to create good listings. One of the great things about online arbitrage is most likely you're going to be piggybacking off of an existing listing. And so that makes it a little bit easier to create listings. Um, the pros and cons is that you're selling in-demand products in most cases, in most cases, not in all cases, but a lot of people who do online arbitrage, they are shooting for those in-demand products. There are ways to do online ar arbitrage where you're not shooting for those immediate in-demand products, but maybe they're products that are going to be in demand, um, you know, like you're doing the buy and hold strategy. So they are things that people want to buy, but they don't have to buy them immediately. So a lot of retail arbitragers are going to be selling replenishables that when people run out of something, they got to go back and get it. Or it's something that maybe they buy like once a year or twice a year. So there are things that we all buy when you go to the store. Think about the stuff you put in your cart every week or every month. And then, you know, you can play the long game with some of those things because what you buy, there's a high probability other people may need to buy, depending on where you live and what you do. So, and when I say where you live, like right now, it's warmer here in Texas. It was cold last week and the week before that, but it's warmer here in Texas. So we don't need winter items. We don't need things to help us uh, to either stay warm or, you know, break down the ice like we did last week. That was crazy. So an example would be up north, they may need more salt. And so when they once they run out of salt, you got to go back and get some. That's a replenishable. Um, they, it's a low startup investment. Like I said before, you don't need a boatload of cash to get started. I, I'm not saying you got to start with $5,000 to do online arbitrage. You can start with $25, $50 a week, but you have to understand if you're wanting to scale it, or if you want it to grow, you're going to have to reinvest that money. So you're priming the pump for a period of time before you can start pulling any cash out of it. That's the suggestion. Now, some people pull cash out of it immediately and that's their call. And then they get frustrated when they don't have any more money to reinvest into it or they don't see the profit because they weren't paying attention, paying attention to the margins. Um, it is, in most cases, something easy to list. So, like I said, you're piggybacking in some cases um, on existing listings things that are going to sell every year anyway, like Easter eggs are going to sell every single year. People are going to buy Easter baskets. So there's probably already Easter eggs out there online somewhere. And there's probably Easter basket listings already that exist. So you may not even have to create the listing, which is always awesome. And again, that's going to depend on the platform. And some platforms, you're going to have to create a brand new listing. So you have to get good at listing, as I said before. Um, and there's low risk. So because you're not spending a boatload of money up front. You're not spending thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars up front to get started. Then you don't have as much risk when it comes to um, doing online arbitrage. Now, what are the cons? You are going to have to spend some time doing this business. You can streamline some of the time that you spend doing this business by you know, investing in some software. That's a con. That's an expense. You're going to have to be prepared for that expense if you want to save yourself a little bit of time. Um, cash flow, you have to be prepared for your cash flow solution. So I gave you some suggestions. Um, you have little control over the product. That's the one thing about doing online arbitrage. If you run out, online, then you run out. And if you can't find another supplier to find it, then, oh, well, you could have a hot selling item. So I do like to do a mix of online and retail arbitrage because I can just get in a car and go somewhere and get that product. Because if they only have so many online, okay. But in the stores, if that product is actually in the stores, you can find it. The other thing is that, I mean, you know, we talked about retail arbitrage yesterday, so go listen to uh, that session. But 
uh, with retail arbitrage, again, you can find things that only exist in the stores and they are not online. That's another opportunity. And those could be items that you can flip online. So that's another tip for the retail arbitragers, finding things that don't exist online yet and putting them online. Um, so with a, a con is, you know, a little control over the product. Um, another con is you have to move quickly. So you need to have that cash flow. And what I mean by move quickly is that, again, they're going to have so many available online. And so if you don't grab those and you could come back and look at that, you could literally find it and then go back and look at it five minutes later and somebody else has already swiped all of them and put them in their basket and bought them and you're just out of luck. So you have to be prepared to move quickly. Uh, another con is that there's going to be competitors and you need to be prepared for that. Um, and then another con is that there's going to be platform restrictions or requirements that you have to meet. So all of those are cons to doing online arbitrage. So I encourage you, you know, if you're interested in doing online arbitrage, it is profitable. It can be profitable. And so these are the things that you have to consider. And um, hopefully this information is helpful. You can come back and tune in for the next in our series uh, tomorrow as we continue to talk about which method of e-commerce may or may not be good for you and may work out for you. So share this out with a friend. Let somebody else know about uh, the this series that we're going through, which platforms are good for you and what it's required in order to sell on those platforms or to uh, perform that e-commerce method. So with that, I invite you to turn up the dial and get laser focused in your business and grab the My Ecom Planner. It is the ultimate e-commerce planner. It's created for sellers by sellers. So grab the Ecom Planner at myecomplanner.com right now. It's terribly affordable. You want to grab that so that you can plan out the rest of your year, plan for your future success, get your business um, on track and uh, move forward. So grab the Econ Planner at myeconplanner.com. It'll definitely help you get organized, get focused and get consistent in your business. Um, if you haven't already done so, you can schedule a free 20 minute coaching session by going to ecomsellers.com, clicking on free resources to schedule a free 20 minute coaching session. So go to ecomsellers.com and click on free resources. Sorry. Yeah. To schedule a free 20 minute coaching session. And then I do invite you to join Ecom Sellers Academy. It's terribly affordable. It's $17.99 a month. You get a live weekly training session, a live weekly Q&A. You also gain access to our library of over 200 training videos. You also get a free arbitrage list and a free wholesale list every single week. So go to ecomsellersacademy.com right now to sign up. And if you sign up for the lifetime, you get a free e-commerce planner. So with that, we're going to now go through the daily econ planning checklist. So you can join us over on Clubhouse if you want to continue the conversation, maybe do an accountability check-in. Let me know what you plan on doing today in your business. Ask any questions. You can talk about online arbitrage, print on demand, drop shipping, um, retail arbitrage, wholesale, whatever your questions are. Let's talk about them on Clubhouse after we go through the daily econ planning checklist. So let's continue the conversation if you want to chat about your business. So with that, let's get into the daily econ planning checklist. So with the daily econ planning checklist, there's three things that we're going to focus on. The first one is the things that we're going to do the night before. The next are the things that we're going to do the uh, morning of. And then the next thing is going to be the things that we do in the future. Now we're thinking about the future. So the night before... Uh, and the reason that we do this is because we want to be intentional and be consistent in our business. Being intentional and also being consistent will help us to grow and scale our business much quicker and much faster. So the night before, what we're going to do is we are going to be going through and assessing our day, rating our day so that we know what kind of progress we did make today and what are the things we didn't get done, what did we accomplish, and what did we not. We're going to celebrate the things we did get done. We're not going to kick ourselves for not getting those things done. But we're also going to learn from maybe we had an aggressive schedule or maybe yesterday was just a really rough day. I get it. We're going to decide what are we going to carry forward into tomorrow and what do we need to move to next week. So, we're going to go through and assess the day to see what kind of progress we made today. Number two is we're going to uh, 
um, update our daily tracking stats in our Ecom Planner. And if you don't have an Ecom Planner, you could update your daily tracking stats and whatever tool you do have, if you have a notebook or whatever, so that that way you know those key performance indicators that are going to potentially help you move the needle in your business and grow your business in 2023. So update your daily tracking stats. And then before we go to bed, we're going to review our online calendar. Our online calendar for our business, for our personal life, and for our jobs. So if you've got doctor's appointments, dentist appointments, don't be surprised by that when you wake up and go, oh my God, today I got to go to the dentist. Like, don't be surprised by that. <laughs> or, oh my God, today I'm supposed to be traveling to Arizona. Like, oh, wait a minute. So don't be caught off guard by that. Always be aware of what's happening in your life or what's coming up so you're not caught off guard. So go uh, make sure you're looking at your online calendar so that you're not waking up tomorrow morning in a frizzy. And then the last thing we do the night before is we build our schedule for the night, for the day tomorrow. We build a draft of our schedule if we didn't already do so, so that that way we're setting ourselves up for success. Those people that are high income earners, they know what they're doing tomorrow. They're not surprised by it when they wake up. They're not trying to figure it out when they wake up. They already know what's going down tomorrow. So we're going to build a schedule for tomorrow so that we have an opportunity to lay the blueprint for our success for the day. That's your goal. Create your blueprint for your success for the day tomorrow. Now, for some of us, because we may be organized and we're on top of our schedule, we don't have to build out a detailed schedule. But for others, you know, if you're one of those people, you can't figure out what you did today, what you got done, what progress you made on anything today, writing out a detailed schedule may be what you need to do because of the fact that, you know, you are have you lose control of your day. You can't figure out where you're making progress. You can't figure out where things are getting done. And so, again, it's your opportunity to, you know, regain control of what's happening in your day and building out a detailed schedule may be the thing that you need to do. If you are very organized, building out a detailed schedule, maybe you just want to write down your top 10, top five, top three that you want to get done for the day. So you don't need a detailed schedule. So again, figure out what needs, what makes sense for you and which one you need to do. And make sure that the schedule that you build for tomorrow includes everything that's happening in your life, not just your business, because God gives us 24 hours in the day. What are we doing with our 24 hours? We're not running our business the entire 24. Hopefully we're sleeping anywhere from six to eight hours. And hopefully we're not spending the remaining 16 hours of our day in our business. We're doing other stuff. So make sure that you incorporate the things that make sense from your personal life standpoint, you know, things that may have to do with your fitness or your finances or a, another business that you may be running or your household and your family. Um, so make sure that you create an inclusive schedule. So now we're going to move on to the things that we're going to be doing in the morning now today. So the first thing in the morning when we get up, we're going to reassess yesterday. The reason we do that is so that we can learn from anything that maybe just didn't pop in our brain last night as we were going through and reassessing the day. The, and it also hopefully will help us build a better schedule in the future. So we're going to go through that exercise of re-reviewing what we wrote down for yesterday. What are the things that, oh, okay, we lost time, but we lost time because this thing right here came up. Sometimes documenting the things that come up that completely derail you and then putting together a contingency plan or a backup plan or a solution for those things so that if they come up again, maybe there's a way to get around it or to deal with it much better. Or maybe it, there's a way to build a much better schedule in the future. Emergencies don't count. Like you can't plan for car wrecks. You can't plan for broken bones. You can't plan for, you know, just the 1000% unexpected true emergency. But other things, maybe they come up in our lives and we just don't realize that there's a pattern that is happening in our lives that we have not really been paying attention to. So maybe that pattern that's happening in your life could be that, you know, everything is an emergency for you because you're not really paying attention to things that you schedule. So you're reacting to everything. So let's work on controlling that and managing that and doing a better job of not reacting to things. So for the longest time for me personally, like if I had doctor's appointments or dentist appointments, or I had to go meet with someone about my kids, like 
I would forget that I had scheduled it two weeks in advance or three weeks in advance. And so when it came up, it was like the morning of, and I would be caught off guard. So to fix that on my Google calendar, my personal Google calendar, what I do, because I know that I get busy doing a lot of different things. I have ADHD and I have to accept that about myself, but um, I set three reminders. I set a reminder for the morning of, so like 30 minutes or an hour before I'm supposed to be wherever I'm supposed to be. I also set a reminder two days before, and then I set a reminder five days before. So this is not a surprise that this dentist appointment is coming up this week. So five days before I am mentally engaged in the fact that there's a dentist appointment coming up or a doctor's appointment coming up. So I set up those reminders and I do it inside my Google calendar. It makes it a whole lot easier. So again, if you're a person that is finding yourself just reacting to things that are happening, that may be an easy way to solve that problem. The next one is to review your weekly priorities and the weekly habits that you're working to build. And then next is to glance at your monthly calendar. So the monthly calendar that you built for your life and your business for this month of February, you're into the first full week of February. February only has three full weeks and two partial weeks. So you're into the uh, first full week of February. What did you have on your agenda for this month? And what are your priorities for the month? So is your priority this month to... Uh, send in your Easter baskets or is your priority this month to source for Mother's Day? What is your priority for this month? Okay. And for this week. So what's your priorities for this week? Then number four is that we are going to go through and we're going to review the schedule we built last night and potentially rewrite it or rebuild it. Why? Because once we've gone through and looked at our weekly priorities and we looked at the month, maybe we need to go ahead and make some adjustments. So after we go through and we kind of look at the schedule and um, either re-read it out loud if it's perfect or make adjustments and rewrite it and then read it out loud to ourselves, we're ready to go. So we're going to read it, write it, speak it. And make sure you've identified the one main thing that if nothing else goes right today, right today you have to get this one thing done. Last, we're going to write out a quick draft of a schedule for tomorrow, not a full-blown one, just a high, hit the high points. You can write out the detail tonight because, of course, we're going to plan for tomorrow, tonight. So uh, unless you did the weekly planning session and you've already got a draft for the entire week. So go through and write out a draft for tomorrow. And then the very last thing that we're going to do is we're going to do some advanced planning so that we can plan for our future success. There's going to be things that are going to impact, interrupt, disrupt this routine, these habits that you're working to build, and it's going to impact your routine. And your goal is to maintain momentum or to put plans in place so that you can sustain momentum. The beginning of every year, people establish New Year's resolutions and they start off strong and they fizzle out, as the pastor would say. And so your goal this year is not to fizzle out not to start strong and be consistent for two weeks or three weeks and then go, you know, fall off the wagon. That's not what we're shooting for. So your goal is to figure out how you can sustain the momentum that you built in your business in the midst of life happening. And life is going to happen. Life is going to happen. So those minor disruptions, whether it be a doctor's appointment that you can't move to the afternoons and you know you work in your business in the mornings, then what you do is what are those activities I would have been doing in the morning? Maybe I move all of those activities to the evening or maybe I get up an extra hour earlier so I can knock out a couple of those and move the rest of them to the afternoon. So you start getting strategic about maintaining that momentum that you're building in your business and in your life around the habits that you're working to build or the things you're working to keep in place. Okay. Same thing with those things that are like bigger events that are going to take up several days or a week. Again, what can you do to build the momentum and keep the momentum in your life and in your business so that you don't fall off the wagon? So put those things in place. And be prepared to deal with those disruptions or interruptions that are going to impact your ability to sustain the momentum that you're building in your business. 
Don't start strong and fizzle out. Let's start strong, stay strong, and finish strong. That's the goal. So with that, I hope that this information is helpful to you. I hope that it helps you to, you know, build the momentum that you're working to build in your business and that you keep that momentum. And I hope it's a blessing to you and your business. So my name is Nicole Whitlock, and this is the daily econ planning session. And my passion is helping people on their e-commerce journey, helping them to get organized, get focused, get consistent in their business. So if that's you, you can definitely schedule a free 20 minute coaching session by going to ecomsellers.com and clicking on free resources. I encourage you to grab the e-commerce planner. It is the ultimate e-commerce planner. It's created for sellers by sellers. Let's get organized this year. Let's get focused. And... If you are looking for some support on your e-commerce journey, you can join Ecom Sellers Academy. It's terribly affordable. You can go to Ecom Sellers Academy right now to sign up so we can support you on your e-commerce journey. So I hope that um, we're still live on Clubhouse. So if you want to continue the conversation, hop over there, join the Ecom Sellers Club so that that way we can continue the conversation together. Otherwise, I hope you have an amazingly blessed, extremely focused and highly profitable day. And we will say goodbye for now. Bye, y'all. See you on Clubhouse.